One of the features of the Earth which distinguishes it from other planets is the magnetic field and magnetosphere. As all magnetic fields, it can be presented with lines. Those points where the field density has vertical position represent the magnetic poles of our planet. There are two of them, the North Magnetic Pole and the South one. Their location does not coincide with the geographical poles of the Earth, although on the global scale they are not very distant from each other. The magnetic poles are constantly changing their position by several tens of kilometers per year. It should be noted that the usual designation of poles as north and south are incorrect from a physical point of view. Let us recall a compass needle. Its north pole point is of course to the north, but as the same poles should push each other away, we conclude that in fact the magnetic pole located in the northern hemisphere is actually the south one from the physical point of view, and vice versa. The straight line that crosses the poles is called a magnetic axis, and the line of the circle lying in the plane perpendicular to the axis is called the magnetic equator. Across this line, the magnetic field density has conventionally horizontal direction. At different points of the Earth, for example, at the poles and the equator, the field's density is different, but on the average, its value is 0.5 Oersted. What is the nature of magnetic fields on the Earth? There is no common opinion in this regard, but most likely its origin is related to the flow of currents in the liquid core of the planet. It is assumed that the Earth's core consists of liquid metal. When currents start to move in the core, the effect of cell generation on magnetic field, the magnetic dynamo mechanism is implemented. The area where this process occurs is located approximately at the distance of a quarter, one-third of Earth radius. The magnetic field of a planet depends on the structure of the core, its composition and physical state. For example, Venus doesn't have its own field, and the density of other planets varies. For example, the fields of the Moon and Mercury are less intensive than the one of the Earth, and Saturn's and Jupiter's fields are much more intensive. The magnetic field of the Earth is constantly influenced by the flow of magnetized solar plasma. That is why the size and the shape are forever changing. These changes are called geomagnetic variations, and the area of the space, which is under the influence of the field of the planet, is called magnetosphere. The flow of charged particles of solar wind deviates from the original trajectory under the influence of the field. The magnetosphere has a complicated shape. Depending on the intensity of the solar wind and the state of the internal field, it takes strange shapes and is usually flattened on the subsolar side. The solar wind flows around it and forms a cylindrical magnetic tail. Its length is quite significant and equals more than 200 Earth radii, i.e. it is longer than the radius of the lunar orbit. On the day side, the boundary of the magnetosphere, or as it called, the magnetopause, is closer, about 15 Earth radii. Does the magnetosphere of the planet and its changes have any impact on the human life? Yes, they do. There would have been no life on the Earth without it. Earth's magnetosphere is like a shield, an armor protecting us from harmful cosmic radiation. Thanks to it, the solar wind goes around the Earth and therefore does not harm living organisms living on the planet. On a less global scale, processes within the magnetosphere caused, for example, by solar activity influence many people and their general state. During the so-called magnetic storms, for example, people may feel worse. But some lucky people can visually observe phenomena associated with the geomagnetic field, I mean, the aurora polaris. Sometimes it is called the north one, but it is not really true, as the same process occurs at the south pole. This phenomenon of luminescence of the upper atmosphere due to interaction with the solar wind particles, due to bombardment of the upper layers by charged particles, excitation of atoms and molecules of atmospheric gases, they begin to radiate in the visible range. On the other planets which have atmosphere and magnetic fields, auroras are also possible. But depending on the composition of atmosphere, the ranges of radiation are different. Why auroras can only be observed near the magnetic poles, Charged particles approaching the Earth move along its magnetic lines, and some of them get into atmosphere in the zones of magnetic poles, auroral ovals, which have a diameter of about 3,000 kilometers. Visually, auroras are very diverse and beautiful. They last from several minutes to several days. 
most often they can be observed in spring and autumn, as well as in cases of high solar activity. It is believed that the magnetic field density varies in the course of time. There are long-term decays and intensifications of the field density, and every decay occurs with a period of approximately 4,000 years. After that, the period of strengthening comes and lasts for nearly the same amount of time. At the present time, the Earth is at the decay stage. However, it is not proved yet, but it is known for certain that poles inversion occurred repeatedly, i.e. the poles have already changed their locations for the opposite ones. The exact periodicity of these processes has not been determined, and the time of the next inversion is unpredictable yet. What will happen to humanity if it occurs? Our scientists cannot say for sure. However, there is a hypothesis that no catastrophic effect will happen and everything will turn out well.